Hey everybody, the original idea I had for the video to be included in this project was to actually go to a ball game. Just take some video of the atmosphere, um, that beautiful geometric field that is laid out right in front of you, which I think is pretty much heaven. Maybe some action shots of, you know, middle infielders turning two, or, a, you know, long home run or a good looking strikeout or whatever it is. Um, I was going to hopefully get some angles and get some good footage of, uh, of live action ball game. As it is, um, collegiate baseball season is, is canceled. So there's no way of me getting some footage of Texas State versus UT or um, going out. And right now, Major League Baseball, Mile League Baseball is suspended. So there's no way for me to go to Round Rock to a Round Rock Express game and get some footage there. So calling an audible and uh, what I'm going to do instead is just kind of go over some of the books in my baseball library. Uh, the the primary ones here and then as you can see here, here's my, my other stack and just kind of chat a little bit about um, you know the most important books here. First up, Ted Williams is The Science of Hitting. Um, I got this book when I was really really young uh, my father would, you know, when we're not playing baseball on the weekends, it was, you know, lawn work or uh, my dad would prioritize going to the library. And many of these books that you'll see today um, are books that I got from library book sales or from like used book shops that we go to. There was a used book store right next to the uh, academy that my father and I would go to growing up. Anyhow, uh, that's kind of how I accumulated most of the books I own that and I guess Amazon like anyone else. But Anyhow, Ted Williams' The Science of Hitting is a pretty extraordinary breakdown of, um, it's illustrated, which helps. You have, you know, this this illustration is just understanding the concept between how both in your golf swing and, and in the um, baseball swing that you are generating your power through your torque and your hips, and you, more so than you are your shoulders or your wrists or your arms. Anyhow, um, it's an illustrated book with a lot, with, with, uh, uh, many details about what he thinks, what he believes to be the the um, best modes and the best methods of hitting. It's got these outstanding illustrations that I got a kick out of as a kid. And um, my favorite one, my favorite one is this. I would really, 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 really like that. Like blown up to a screen print someday is pretty great. And then the last thing I want to show you is a pretty interesting look. Um, this is a heat map. It was it's, it was his heat map, and there are a few reasons why I think this is interesting. One, uh, Ted Williams is one of the greatest hitters ever, and apparently he had trouble with balls that are low in the way, low in the way. As you can see, the the, the 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 darker colored stuff, the red and the orange, it meant that um, he had a pretty good at batting average. Uh, you know, right here, if you if you put something right in his wheelhouse, he'll be hitting it uh, about half the time uh, for a base hit. But if you go low and away, he basically had trouble uh, taking the balls. He's a lefty, so um, taking the ball to left field. Anyhow, the only re the other reason I wanted to show this to you is just the fact that um, it's just to illustrate how in Ted Williams' time the strike zone was much much larger, which benefits the pitcher. And much like any other professional sports, basketball, football, um, the powers that be they wanted to generate more offense and more like firepower and production, uh, more scoring. And so uh, one of the things they did in the '60s and the late '60s was they um, lowered the uh, strike zone from the top of the shoulders down to the chest, the, le the letters, which is which would be right about here, and then from the bottom of the knees to the top of the knees. So they reduced, they significantly reduced the strike zone uh, in today's game than, than they did back then. So the hitters were a little bit more of a dis disadvantage. Anyhow, uh, great book. I enjoyed it as a kid, and I clearly still like picking it up. My second book is a book by Jackie Robinson entitled Baseball Has Done It. Um, it's not quite an autobiography, but it does talk quite a bit about himself. But he also speaks with uh, other ball players, uh, including Ernie Banks, Frank Robinson, and Hank Aaron, who we'll talk about shortly. Um, just about what their um, life experiences were like um, after Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Um, there were quite a few uh, persons of color and ball players. Particularly African Americans who who came through and um, uh, 
they prove that they are exceptional ball players, exceptional humans, and just great Americans. And uh, it's basically a collection of their experiences and what they went through in the growing up in the 30s and all the way in, in you know, uh, playing ball in the 40s and, um, and basically what life has been like, you know, in America in the middle of the 20th century. Outstanding, outstanding book. And it's de de definitely a testament to... Um, all the hard work that a lot of these ball players put in and went through as they were as they were coming up in Jim Crow America. Third on my list is the autobiography by Henry Aaron, entitled Aaron. Uh, I said Henry Aaron. Aaron calls him Hank Aaron. I guess you just happened to read the, the the cover there. I read this book when I must have been in third grade, and I devoured every word of it. Um, he was just, he was an outs he is an outstanding human was an outstanding ball player and one of the things that stood out to me as a kid was uh, you know when I was growing up the neighborhood kids would just play tennis ball baseball there's a lot of tennis sports we would just you know t the tennis ball was the thing we would uh, the default ball that we would you know hit during home run derby you know and what have you and so we had metal bats and tennis balls and that's what we were growing up with what he grew up with was um, the neighborhood children would throw bottle caps, you know, soda bottle caps. Uh, you know, they'd ask their men to hold on to their, their beer bottle caps and um, uh, they would use those as the ball. They would throw bottle caps at each other and they would use broom handles, broomsticks as, as their bats. And uh, Hank Aaron attributed growing up, developing eye hand coordination, developing a swing with by, by learning how to hit bottle caps with broomsticks. And um, anyhow, pretty extraordinary story, and he's uh, definitely a great American. Next up is Cal Ripken's The Only Way I Know, pretty much an autobiography. Uh, unlike Hank Aaron, uh, he grew up in a baseball family. Hank Aaron grew up from uh, blue-collar backgrounds, whereas Cal Ripken, ball players didn't make much in his father's time as they do now, but you know, they, they, still, did, they still did okay. And uh, Cal Ripken grew up in, in major league fields, major, major league stadiums. Both he and his brother uh, were all ball players and they played for his father, who was a coach. And one of the stories I remember from this book was um, Cal Ripken was able to hit a home run off of a tee, you know. Uh, Ball players is a practicing device. They don't have to use a, a, a pitcher. They'll, they'll have a tee. It's same thing as in golf, except it's, you know, you, you position the tee where you want it, whether or not you want it to be high or, or you know, belt high or at your knees or a little bit higher or what have you. But um, just the fact that um, when you're hitting it, you know, there's no velocity coming in. So the action and the lot and the, um, the action you get off the bat and the ball is generated all from your own power. You can't rely on velocity coming in. Anyways, uh, he mentions that as a high schooler, he was able to hit the ball out of a major league field over the wall, out of the park, off the tee, which I thought was wild because... I never really could generate that much torque or power off a stationary ball. Like anytime I hit a ball off the tee, uh, there really wasn't that tremendous like pop or action. Uh, but for him to be able to drive the ball 350 plus feet uh, just off a stationary tee was uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. And the next book um, that I'll be talking about is a uh, photography book. The photographer Charles M. Conlon, he uh, he was a, a heralded photographer in baseball's golden age, and he uh, essentially took uh, photos of, of ball players from 1910 to about 1940 or so, and um, he's got a lot of memorable, iconic photos. We have Roger Rogers Hornsby here, and um, it's 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 a it's definitely an interesting look at. Uh, at, at baseball before it was segregated, you know, um, a lot of a lot of pre-depression era, and I mean th these are from the 1910s, 19 in the teens, all the way up to 1930s depression era, and the the, the photos are 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 wild, and um, you know you, 
you feel like you're you're holding history, and and I feel like whenever you're reading when you're reading about baseball history, you are reading about like uh, American societal history, and that's one of the parts that 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 really speaks to me. Um, speaking of which, you know, one, once I kind of got into college, I got a little more more um, critical thinking and uh, and and read less from an athletic standpoint and more from a sociological sport uh, standpoint, and that's whenever I got into Dave Zirin and. Uh, this is a people's history to sports the United States and another book he, he entitled what's my name fool which is a kind of a catchphrase or a, a popular phrase that Muhammad Ali would say in the sub sub title here sports and resistance in the United States both very interesting read reads uh, I recommend pretty much all these books are pretty exceptional obviously if you like baseball you'll you'll like these books more but um, but yeah that's my abbreviated baseball book collection. Thanks a lot.